Yo, I see this, I'm like, you you did it, okay? I don't know what you did, but you did something. I'm saying it. What's it like to interrogate a manipulator? Case of Paul Quant Sr., a 78-year-old disabled veteran who was subjected to a brutal and agonizing Murder is back on the menu? I mean, I don't even know if this is murder or not. Death at the hands of the last person he would suspect. Blues Creek in Northwest Gainesville, Florida, seemed like a safe place for Paul Quant Sr. to settle down. He lived there for many years, and he seemed to be living a quiet and cheerful life. He was described by many who knew him as a kind-hearted gentleman who always saw the best in people, no matter who they were. On the night of January the 9th, 2012, however, the idyllic vision of his safe neighborhood was shattered when the 78-year-old disabled Navy veteran became the victim of a violent home invasion. The investigators described the scene as nothing short of oh. horrific. There was blood all it's, over the carpet. It, it's censored. Quant Senior was left bruised and bloodied, but he managed to get to the home of his neighbor, Virginia Grisson, to beg for help. Bear in mind, during this phone call to 911, Paul is slowly bleeding to death and is in an indescribable amount of pain. And it's remarkable to see that he still had the courage and bravery to go out and find help. 911, what's an emergency? What's his name, ma'am? His name is Paul. We're getting some help. Just stay on the line. Stay with him. Okay, they're coming to your house as fast as they can. Tell me exactly what happened. Jesus Christ. Okay. How many people broke into his house? Oh my God. A man and a woman. Can you ask him when they left his house? About 30 minutes ago, he thinks. So what did they want? They cleaned this safe out. And they stole his Cadillac, a white Cadillac Eldorado. His table bedroom for a Okay. Are you I know, it's an ambulance. I'm with significant head trauma and a sizable piece of his forearm sawed off by a knife, police concluded that he had been tortured in the midst of the robbery, likely in an attempt to get information about valuable assets in the home. Grissom called for an ambulance, and before losing consciousness, Quant Sr. indicated that a male and female suspect were responsible for his attack, and that they had made off with everything, including the contents of his personal safe. Quant Sr. was sent to the hospital, where he was sadly pronounced dead shortly after due to his injuries. Meanwhile, Gainesville Police Department Sergeant Stephen Girard spotted the stolen Cadillac not far from Paul's home. A car chase ensued, with the suspect reaching upwards of 100 miles per hour before ultimately crashing into two other vehicles. Have there ever been any ops that have been mostly feds and even the feds didn't know? And the feds didn't know? I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's like, there's wire crossing between different kinds of uh, agencies all the time. I mean, there's like movie examples of it as well, where you have like the ATF uh, conducting an investigation, and then you have like an undercover CIA agent involved in that investigation. So that kind of stuff happens from time to time. There have been cases of feds selling drugs and feds buying drugs and they arrest each other. Am I crazy? Doesn't this sound like... You think they added the Grand Theft Auto sound because they didn't have sound on it? Because it literally sounds like Grand Theft Auto sound. I'm pretty sure they just didn't have sound on this because it's dash cam footage. Yeah. The suspect was searched by police who found many objects linking him to the crime, including a stun gun, bloody duct tape, and bloody latex gloves. They quickly put him under arrest as he invoked his right to remain silent. Gaines Bro, how the fuck is this dude going to get away? Or not get away, but like, how is he going to try to defend himself? Authorities were able to identify the man as 22-year-old Austin Mark Jones after running his fingerprints through their database. Investigators, however, were still searching for the female attacker that Paul Quant had mentioned to Grissom. 
By speaking with friends and family, police learned Paul was frequently visited by caregivers and that each healthcare professional fuck? was required to sign in and out, confirming they had visited him. Authorities found that one caretaker's address matched Mark Jones' current address. It was his 22-year-old cousin, Miranda Martin. Ah! At her listed address, investigators found Martin's boyfriend, Chad McKee, who claimed he had no knowledge on the incident. They took him to an interrogation room for a formal interview. You can you tell me about Miranda? She's been my girlfriend for about six years. Do you know where she's at right now? Uh, as far as I know, she was at work. You know a guy by the name of Austin? Miranda's cousin. He's in jail. Or he's at the hospital. He's fixing to go to jail. Well, all I can tell you about Austin is that I know that he has been in trouble a few times. But other than that, I, I don't really know Austin. Was the last time we heard from Miranda? It was 2.54 a.m. She told me she was at her work, like when her patient had fell asleep. And that was really, I mean, I just told her I was watching a movie. What time was Miranda supposed to get off work? She told me 8, 8, 8. Well, we don't want you caught up in something that you shouldn't be caught up in. Because uh, what we're investigating is very serious crime. Attempted murder. Home invasion robbery. Uh, a lot of bad stuff. You're really out of character for her to do anything like what you're talking about. I mean, I've been married for six years and she hasn't done anything against the law other than traffic citations. It's possible she's not involved in this. No, I know, like I said, I don't you know. It's possible our information has led us to her. And when we finally reach her, we'll find that she wasn't at all who we were looking to speak with. Well, if you will, hang tight and uh, we're going to meet with the sergeant and make sure he's good with everything. Listen, dude, I, I know I don't know what you told them and all this kind of stuff or anything, but um, This is I kind of an inviting them. ass fucking interrogation room, by the way. This seems literally like a, a fucking seems like a Twin Peaks ass interrogation room. I find it hard to believe that she's been your girlfriend for several years and, and you don't you don't know anything. I mean, what are you asking me if I think that my girlfriend I think that she asked me about it. She, she mentioned it in front of you. I'm just as shocked as you are to find out that you guys are knocking on my door every time asking me if my girlfriend's committed attempted murder. Well, she had to go to work, is what she told me. We just talked to her the manager. She said she's not working today. Not at all. Why is she lying now about going to work? Your guess is as good as mine. At first, the detectives were adamant that Chad knew what his girlfriend did and was trying his best to cover for her. However, the more they interviewed him and the more they analysed his movement and body language, the more they realised that he was actually telling the truth and was indeed unaware about his girlfriend's despicable plan. Or he was the male manipulator. I'm just saying, dude, maybe he's a really good manipulator. That's why he's like over the top, like, oh, I'm so tired. <sighs> Can I just go home? You know, typical male manipulator bullshit. I'm just saying, dude, think about it. Call her, put her on speaker, say, hey, what's up? Are you coming home? What's the plan? And then we'll just uh, go. go from there, see what happens. The mailbox is full and cannot accept it. I don't think she's going to pick up. If Miranda was in trouble, if she couldn't come home to you, what was her mom? What's her name? Kathy Martin. The detectives decided to visit Miranda's mother's house in Fort White in order to question her about her daughter's whereabouts where they surprisingly found Miranda there, hiding out in one of the rooms. Both Miranda and her mother, Kathy Jones Martin, were brought in for questioning. They were- Bro, I'm sorry, this is bad vibes, dude. I mean, that's like, yo, I see this, I'm like, you, you did it, okay? I don't know what you did, but you did something. Sorry, it's just, <laughs> I don't know what it is. You did something though. We gotta figure it out, that's guilty. Both Miranda and her mother, Kathy Jones Martin, were brought in for questioning. They were placed in two I literally have goosebumps, dude. I have goosebumps from that. I have, like, I, I, my, my, my hair is rising just by looking at that photo. That's bad vibes all around. And questioned simultaneously. The detective's main aim is to establish a timeline and trap them into a story. If any of their accounts differ from one another, <sighs> it would be a huge step in the case against them. Tell me 
you about your day yesterday? I left my apartment. It was around 11, 12. And I went out to my mom's yesterday between daylight and dark. Austin asked Randy to give me a ride okay. to his lady friend. I met up with some chick, and that's the last I seen him. He gave Austin a ride to work. It was a parking lot off of, I don't know if it was 13th or 440 White. I just dropped him off and left. Okay, when you dropped him off and left, where'd you go? Yeah, I thought I had to work, so I had to go back and pretend like I was getting my work clothes. Why, why are you lying to Chad? I lied to him last night because I just wanted to spend a night like with my mom and everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want him to get mad, so I told him I was working. In the short time she was interviewed, Miranda has already admitted to willingly lying to her boyfriend about her whereabouts. It's clear to see that this is a sign of her true nature beginning to show. Somebody who is willing to deceive and fabricate the truth in order to receive what she wants. Okay, so you drop Austin off sure. and drove back to your mom's. Yes. So what time do you think you got to your mom's? Yeah, Homie hit the... We heard that. We heard you. I respect it. Like 10. I don't, it's not Austin Ox, but it does sound like Okay, it. so she left around dusk. Made it in between 10 and 11. Okay, but it's what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six hours she's gone to just drop him off. Did she say if she went anywhere else after that? Or? Uh, well, I thought she was going to work. If you can think of anything, I would much rather leave everything on the table. You know, I don't know. Maybe everything that you've told us is what you know. I don't know. But I'm just, I just like to let people know that from the very beginning. You were in Fort White at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I take it that you had your phone with you. Mm -hmm. The detectives believe that she was in Gainesville, where Paul Quant resided, on Monday, January 9th. However, both Miranda and her mother are adamant that she was in Fort White that night, 32 miles away from Gainesville because Miranda wanted to spend the night with her mother. The detectives need to first of all prove that this is not true if they want to build a case against her. If your signal was bouncing off the tower towards Gainesville at 11 o'clock, would that surprise you? Yeah, it would, it would surprise me. There is a reason we want you to be able to explain it now before... Okay, I'm gonna tell my partner was cheating on me, okay? So I drove back to see if his car was in the parking lot. You drove by where? My and you got back to Gainesville at what time now? It was around like 1 or 1.30. Bro, how, how, how are we just not going to fucking wall off Florida and figure out what's going on? We need to build the wall around Florida. That's what we need to do. And just like that, the detectives got what they wanted. Miranda changed her story and said she went back to Gainesville to check up on her boyfriend, placing herself in the area at the time the crime occurred. We have some reservations about where your daughter was last night. Please, be honest. She spent the night at my house in the She made it in between 10 and 11. She rented the movie Paul, and we watched that. Miranda's mother, however, continued to stick to the story, pleading that her and her daughter were together the whole night. This is most likely a story they rehearsed many times before this interview. Frustrated, the detectives decided to conclude the interrogation as it was clear it wasn't going anywhere. How many times total do you think you worked for, for Paul? Well, it was three days a week. At least once a week, I guess you'd, you'd make his bed. Yeah. Okay. The bed sheets, everything that took off the bed, put in the washer and then put back on the bed. So you never got anything off the closets? The only time I ever went the closet was just I hang up stuff and that's it. Okay, so you saw the safe there? Oh, I didn't think that was like a safe safe or anything. What do you think it was? I thought it was just like a box, say like a metal box. Be honest with me. What was the reason for bringing him over here? And be honest. He was supposed to meet up with some girl. I dropped him off. You dropped Austin off just down the road from Paul's house, right? Miranda, be honest with me, but you dropped him off just down the road from Paul's house, right? Yes, okay. meeting some girl, and that's that. Are you a cuck, Miranda? Are you a cuck? 
Are you helping your boyfriend cuck you? That's honestly it. Miranda, I know we've been talking a long time to Detective Joe Mayo. Every time we come outside... Oh, sorry, room, cousin. My bad. It's my boyfriend. And that's why we keep coming back in here and asking you some more questions. Okay? Because nothing seems to be adding up. When you guys went there last night, okay, and... My bad. I mixed up. My bad, boys. I mixed up boyfriend and cousin. Okay? I got... Not gonna make Florida jokes. Okay, let's just continue. When you guys drove up there, Whatever you plan to do, did you expect it to unfold the way it unfolded? Did you expect Austin to act like that? Miranda, this is important. Things changed, right? Things changed, right? Yes. I thought you were just gonna just scare him, just not her, just scare him. Finally, an admission that she did indeed drop Austin off at Paul's house with the intent to make contact with Paul and not for Austin to see a girl. At this point, both the detectives and Miranda I mean, it's know over there's at that no point. turning back from this. The truth is almost out. So what, were, what was Austin's new plan now? I, know, I guess he just wanted everything. I haven't seen everything that he's got, so you tell me what everything is. What does he want from Mr. Paul? I didn't care about what he got or anything. Like I didn't even want Austin to go in the first place. But he did go, and you knew he was going there to scare him. Did you? Did he tell you to wait for him? I waited for him down the street where there was like a house for rent. It must have been hell waiting. Did you ever go in the house just to see what was going on to get him? Did you try to stop him? I was only at like past the doorstep for a little while and I just, I just, I froze. Okay. She has now admitted that she was in Paul Quant's residence at the same time as Austin. However, she's trying her best to distance herself from the brutality of the crime that occurred by only showing peripheral complicity in the crime. In order to charge her for her involvement, the detectives need more admissions from Miranda. You're just standing there, right? Were you in shock? Did you hear Mr. Paul yell for help? I couldn't hear anything. It was... Miranda, what was he saying? I was just, I honestly, I just couldn't hear anything. Uh, what time last night did you go over to Mr. Paul's house? Between 9.30 and 10. Between 9.30 and 10. And who went? Austin went first, and then I followed. Austin rang the doorbell, and the next thing you know, he just pushes it open. Did Mr. Paul see you? I mean, this is just like, <laughs> by sitting. <laughs> okay, chat. A classic. Bro, that is the straight Vegeta hairline. Straight. Like, that is Vegeta. I've never seen that outside of an anime. Look, my man's got the straight V up in here. I don't know what's happening to me. But, fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. God damn it. Okay, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Let's continue. Well, we had a chance after Austin just pushed him. Do you follow him into the... Uh, you follow Austin in? Yes, so I was standing, like, at the edge. He was like... Bro, she just fucking admitted to everything. What happened, dude? This is like, I mean, not to sound disappointed that a, a murderer has been caught, but it, it just feels like, it feels like she came in hot and then threw so early on, you know? Just obliterated her frame. You told you to put her on? Yes, sir. What color was the mask? It was, it was a red Elmo. You had a pin number? Okay, so he got Mr. Paul's pen number? Sure, let's see. Okay, so did Austin tie him up? Yes. Is he begging for his life? He just kept saying, I'll give you everything you want. Please stop, bro, oh, that hurt. And what was Austin hitting him with? It looked like his fist. His fist? And did you see Mr. Paul bleeding? Yes? Okay. I didn't know if Austin was about to do something to me next. Okay. You know that Austin's hitting him, correct? Yes. Okay. And you're saying Austin's collecting everything in the house to take it. So what did Austin take? I seen him with a box of stuff. A box of stuff? No, they were all in the box. Any chance that maybe did you collect anything in the house? Did you take anything? Austin just kept telling me, take it, take it. And where did you put that stuff? In the truck of his car. 
Did you drive the Cadillac out of the garage? Yes, sir. He made me drive to the bank. You guys drove to the bank to use a debit card at the banks? Yes. What bank did you go to? Capital something. Did you go to an ATM machine? Can we get some video from that ATM? Is it going to be you? Yes. How much money did you take out? Four. Bro, that's crazy. How fucking stupid can you be as a criminal? Like, there's no plan whatsoever. They just did the violence, admitted to it immediately, folded like a fucking napkin. I mean, what a wild fucking situation. 400? Okay. Where'd you go next? To the bank on Newberry, but I had exceeded. Oh, exceeded limit? But that was you too. I mean, if we pull the bank yeah, records. It's me. It's you. What are you feeling right now, Miranda? Yeah, are you, are you bro, what, what's it like to interrogate a manipulator? More like, what's it like to fucking interrogate someone who tells you the crimes immediately? Like, this person caused horrific crimes, like, did uh, horrific shit. Only to, like, immediately fucking fold and, and basically admit everything. What the fuck? And I let something bad happen to somebody that didn't deserve it. And I should have stopped it. After the interview was concluded, it was obvious to the detectives that she was involved in the crime just as much as Austin was. Even though she tried to paint a picture that she was a victim in this and that she was being forced by her cousin Austin the whole time. All this was later confirmed to be true when detectives searched the car where they found her journal. What they read highlighted the dark and evil nature of Miranda Martin we watched that already. and really destructed the facade she had put up of a scared individual who was being controlled and manipulated. In fact, she was the one who was manipulating everyone and after reading her journal, it was clear to see the length she went to to execute her plan. I should have looked through the drawers, got to get information on the location of the key, get back in and set up entrance. Also, make sure I set up a stepping system to boost myself up high enough. I want to do it really, really soon, but might have to wait a few months, thinking maybe sometime in December before Christmas. The I'm losing it. Well, this is not what's it like to be... We got manipulated, okay? What's it like to interrogate a manipulator? More like, what's it like to be manipulated into clicking on something? under a false promise this person was not a manipulator unless like she manipulated us by what making it seem like she was uh, a, a smart person at some point but then turned out she was a dumbass i don't even know listen dude if you can fucking destroy if you can absolutely obliterate florida detectives like that's not exactly a good indication that you're smart florida detectives are just begging to be manipulated you can manipulate them by literally telling them to close their eyes and then acting like you walked out of the room. They have no object permanent, okay? And then here you are, you know, not even being able to do that, which is basically like the bare minimum to demonstrate sentience. I don't know, man. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs>